Good morning, Flosstube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in too. And we do have a little bit of that today. If you are new, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play and checking out my channel. I hope you like what you see. Maybe hit like, subscribe, uh, feel free to ask questions, and I do my best to answer them if I can. And if you are a returning stitching friend, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. I love this time of being able to talk stitching with you and just share crafting and our love of being creative in whatever form it takes. So thank you so much. I do appreciate it. So before we get to the projects, which are all right down here, sort of <laughs> tilted, on its way down off the table here. I do want to say a quick, quick, huge thank you. Many of you were eagle eyes and you noticed actually that I hit 4,000 subscribers. I'm, thank you so much. I have been on FlossTube for about three and a half years. I started in February of 2020 and, um, I just, I'm a slow but steady kind of person and I am just so thrilled that you have hit subscribe. If you haven't, maybe think about it, but no pressure. Um, but thank you so much to each and every one of you. It's just amazing to me that I can talk my crafty talk and uh, I can share it with uh, so many people. So thank you. I really, really just can't believe it. Um, I don't have, I do have a giveaway this week. Nothing that's like big 4,000 subscriber giveaway. I need to think about that and, uh, we'll see what happens. So, um, but thank you. Alrighty. I have nine projects of stitching, nine stitching projects, and I did get a full finish, uh, scrapbook page on a 10th piece. So I have lots to show you and we'll just jump right in. So the, ironically, cause I'm looking at my notes here, <laughs> I'm going to, you're going to, I'm going to show you a start. I'm going to show you a finish. <laughs> right off the bat. And I usually don't do that. I pretty much just mix and match everything. You get a little bit of everything all thrown in so that, uh, you know, we can just kind of flow. I usually sometimes try to flow with what I've done during the week, but not always. It doesn't always really work out that way. Um, sometimes I just feel like showing them in a certain way. I don't know why. I just look at all of them and then put them in an order. All right. So the first one is the start. And I talked about this last week. So I am participating for the very first time in cross stitch camp. So the hashtag is hashtag cross stitch camp 2023. And there's another one too. When you post, I can't remember off the top of my head. So color Colorado cross stitcher, uh, created this camp I don't know, two years ago, three years ago. I'm not really sure. I remember hearing people talking about doing summer stitch camp. And in June, July, and August, there are themes and you try to do a start and a finish within that month. You're not required to finish it. Um, they do have giveaways and prizes and such if you do and you post on Instagram and all of that. And I had no plans really. And I don't know, I was watching Sherry's video and I have seen people do it before. And I just said, why not? The theme for June was something with a bird. I have bird stitches. I love, I love bird stitches. So I went through all my stitching and I found something, or uh, my patterns and I went, I found something small. Now this comes out of the Seasons Blessings 2 from Leela Studio. And I am doing, I'll cover up the spring for a second. I am doing the summer blessings. So this pattern, this, when you get this, I got both spring and summer. And I am concentrating on the summer. I thought it's summertime. I love that yellow bird. I did change up the background fabric. You know I would because I, and I, I'm really liking it so far. I think the bird is really going to pop. Uh, once uh, it's completely finished. So that's what I'm stitching for cross stitch camp. And I think I could get a start and a finish in the in the month of June. I have a pretty good start. So this would have been this, this week's uh, stitching that I put into it. And here it is. Look at that bird. Isn't that yellow? I mean, you can't really, although it does have its eye in there and, and the top and it's starting to hold the, the greenery of the berries. So that's what that is if you're looking at it. But love, love, you know, you know me in blues. If you are newer to my channel, blue 
fabric for stitching is one of my all-time go-tos. So <laughs> if you're not sure what I'm going to stitch on, odds are 75% of the time it's going to be a blue. And this one is. This is 18 count Icelandic blue from To Die For Fabrics. And it is a beautiful lighter blue. I can see, do you see the white flower showing up on it? That's always, always um, a question if, uh, you know, the different whites will show up on some of these lighter fabrics. This would be good probably for a nice winter if I wanted a blue winter scene because I know that snow would show up. Uh, but it's so lovely. I'm using all DMCs. I believe it is charted in... Um, let me see if I can find it. A combination. Oh, it's charted in Classic Color Works, but a DMC conversion is provided. And I pulled all the DMC colors, and I think they're going to work. Sometimes, especially because I change fabrics, uh, I do have to change some of the flosses, but I think this one's going to be just fine. So this is the width, obviously. You've seen that. And then, you know, however far down it'll come, it'll be a cute little, a cute little stitch. And I am really enjoying it so far. I only have this one with the summer and spring. I think I have in some wish list somewhere, the winter and fall. And I could see stitching all of these. These would be really cute. So that's my, this is my June stitched piece for Cross Stitch Camp. And I know I have seen some others who have uh, listed or shown or talked about theirs. If you were doing camp, I know one or two of you might have mentioned it in the comments last week, but I'd love to know what you're stitching for camp. Oops, let me put this in with the stitching so I don't lose it. Leave comments down below. I would love to see. All right, now, so that was my start, but I also have a finish. And I had several different pieces all right, several is a strong word. I have a few <laughs> that are getting near to completion and I'm, I'm hoping for a very strong June of finishes. I only had one finish in May. So I'm really, really hoping that we come out strong in June and come out of June with three or four finishes. I think it's possible. I'm thinking off of the top of my head. I think there's at least three others that could get finished. So that would be that would be lovely so this one has I, I don't remember when i started it but i've been working on the series it is my spring quaker no summer quaker <laughs> my goal was to get this one finished by the first day before the first day of summer because that's when i'm starting lila studios summer quaker and this one is the jardin Privé. it is part of a set of four so that's what the set of four looks like and it is just lovely. I was just, who was I watching? I'm never going to remember, but I do know that somebody is getting ready to start these, I believe, and stitch them all as one full piece. They can be. If you look closely, you can see from one season to the next, some of the Quaker elements will get, they'll, they'll end on one side and then they'll go to the next side. So let me show you my finish. Here it is. Summer Quaker done. This is an 18 count My Sunshine from Be Stitch Me. It is stitched with DMC 823 completely. And I had to finish up. I had to finish up this element. I had to do some back stitching. Uh, I had to finish this house. And I believe I'm looking at the back of it to see. And I think I had to finish up here. So I got some really good stitching time in. I'm pretty sure I have everything. These are the kind of things <laughs> you kind of look over really closely and kind of compare with the pattern just to make sure you haven't messed up somewhere or more, more importantly, forgotten a little piece and like there's a big empty spot. Or sometimes I'll see an empty spot and I'll think to myself, oh, was something supposed to go there? But uh, no, we're good. So I have three of the four done. So if I was to show you, if we go seasonally, here's winter. You'll see that all of them are being done on brighter um, colors that kind of correspond in some ways with a certain season. Then we have spring. 
and obviously this is a little crooked. <laughs> I don't think my stitching's crooked enough. And then you have the summer. So if I were just to, they're not all gonna be completely visible, but you can see so far the three lovely colors and then I will do some sort of shade of peach, I believe, for the fall. And I don't have plans to start the uh, autumn piece until I was looking through um, my, this right here container has the charts that I would like to start uh, this year. And I have them separated by months. I kind of did that when I did my video at the beginning of the year, actually, those don't need to, you know, I'm going to put those on the table up here so that they don't get scrunched with everything else. And this I'll just put away after. Um, so I have that separated by months so that I can, <laughs> sorry, distraction, squirrel, complete oddity, but we have trees all over the place and I almost never. And I'm going to knock on wood now because you know, I'm going to see it all the time. I never see a squirrel. I, I'm not quite sure why, but anyway, I digress. Uh, so I have that set up by month and I was looking through, um, and I noticed that in September, I do have it set to start. We'll see, because I do want to start. There's two other bigger pieces that I wanted to start in September and I'm thinking of a third, kind of my version of sampler. September is a little bit different than, you know, kind of the traditional samplers. Um, these are considered samplers as well, you know, and um, I think they've got the alphabet, they've got the motifs, they've got all that. That's kind of my version of it. And so I have a few that are slated to go, I think in September. So I'm wondering if I start I'll see what my August starts potentially look like. So maybe I start the Autumn Quaker in August. So we'll see. That gives me time to go through my fabrics. I haven't made a choice yet. And I will still obviously use the 823. That has gone so nicely with all of the colors. So I'm really happy that I picked that color. Um, really pleased. So we'll see. That will be on the horizon. You'll see that either August or September. And I love stitching those. If you haven't, if you're not sure uh, about them, they're they're a wonderful size. They're not humongous. They are really fun, like designs. Each each season has things that kind of match with the season. And if you like Quakers, um, it's just it. They're just I can't I can't recommend them enough. I do really like them quite a bit. So something to think about if you've been tempted. Alrighty, moving on. So this is one. I'm not going to get a finish on this before the end of June, certainly. Maybe if I just stitched on this, but you know that's not going to happen. Uh, but the end of summer, and I'm going to use August or Labor Day probably as my end of summer. I know technically summer goes all the way to September 21st, but I'm going to use kind of that unofficial end of summer as my guideline. And it's on the beach. This is uh, uh, charted by, created by Stitcherovia. And I am slogging through this. I find, and I know some of you are probably just saying, Laura, sit down and just do it. And I get you. But after a while, just doing the water, it's been, I need a break from it type of thing. And so I'm pleased that the last few weeks I've been able to, and this past week, I don't have my numbers with me. I know I put three or 400 stitches into it. So it definitely got some, a chunk of work done on it. I did have a mistake or two that I had to pull out. So that of course took some time, but there we go. That's what I look, that's what I have. Now this is done on an 18 count beach sand from to die for fabrics. It was chosen deliberately because I really wanted it to look like they were laying at the beach. And as usual, we'll fold it over. Because while I do have a few stray stitches to do, I'll wait until I've got the water done at this point. I know I could just spend one day finding all of those and doing it, but I'll do that at the end along with a little bit of back stitching. This is where I am. So this right here is a page break. So that has also been a little bit of a challenge for me. And that's where a few of my mistakes have come in. Because And 
Citrovia does offer that. It's a digital pattern, and, and it, they they do offer the, um, I don't know how many, three, four, whatever it is, shaded overlap. But because you're, especially down here, well, even up there, there's only two, but there's two colors, and it's just after a while, my eyes just get a little buggy, to be honest with you. And I technically know what the pattern is, and I still messed up. So, um, it'll be It'll be really nice when it's done. I really love the look of it. I just have to slog through. Now there is, let me see if I can look at the picture real quick. There is kind of like a beach volley right here. So that's going to break up some of the monotony of this. And then I do have to go back up here. There's there's a crab that has to be stitched. Something else that I'm not sure. And then there'll be more backstitch associated with that. But I'm pretty sure both of the sunbathers unless there's a stray stitch I've missed somewhere, I'm pretty sure they're both done. So except for this little element here in the water, the water is all I have. And then we go back and we'll start to find. So I wanna say by the end of July, I'd like to have the water done. And then that gives me August to kind of find all of the little itty bitty things to do the back stitching. There's a lot of stop and start with the back stitching. It's not like this like long stretch, which I actually would almost prefer rather than having to stop and start my threads everywhere. So, but I'm gonna love it when it's done. This will just be scrapbooked, I'm almost sure. I don't think, <laughs> I was thinking about it because I have a list of, of some of my finishes that I do want to frame. And if you want to frame yourself, I did see, and I haven't watched either one yet. Um, it's been, it's been, I'm not exactly sure why, but this week I haven't watched a lot of Floss Tube or as much as I would have liked. Um, Helen D has put out two framing um, tutorials, so I'm really interested to see those. And then I don't know, I know there's people who like lacing, people who like pinning. I really don't know the difference between the two, so I would like to watch some videos about that because I'd like to do some on my own of my the framing because these pieces aren't they're not like big heaven and earth i think they're things that i could do on my own certainly i might need custom sized frames but um i think helen goes over that in one of her videos if i read the title right so while it would be kind of cool to have this framed i have two floating shelves the ikea shelves i don't know how long they are four and a half feet maybe i don't think five feet because i'm five two and I don't think I don't know it's hard to tell but you know what I mean so it's just the it's the floating shelf that has the little ledge um I did have Mo attach some little hooks and I can't wait to show you I, I'm starting to have some things off of them and I really like the look of it so uh, maybe I know I owe you a studio a craft room tour the craft room has still some areas of huge messes so um I'm getting there. I did tackle my fabric this week. So that's one thing done. But maybe I've done like little videos like I did one about my um, storage here in my DMC. Once I get some stuff framed and put on the hooks, maybe I'll do like a little mini video of that to show you what those look like uh, and show you, tell you what he did uh, for that. But all that to say if I'm going to frame something, a lot of times it's going to be left out year round because I don't have, I don't have the storage space for it, to be honest with you. So I have to make some really, you know, I have to make decisions. Wall space would only be what would be in this room really, but I really like being able to just, you know, lean the stuff on the shelves. I don't think there's room for any more shelves. It would look kind of off, I think. Um, so that means more scrapbooking, but that's fine because then I'm going to have this big, beautiful book of all of my stitches and I will just love looking through it when the time comes. All right. So that is on the beach. So we're still trying to hold myself accountable to that for the end of summer Labor Day. Today's tea is blackberry sage. It's one of those when you take out the tea bag from the container it is just beautiful. The smell is so berryish and so nice. So that is today's no hibiscus this morning. I haven't had my hibiscus yet. <laughs> okay, now full coverage. 
oops, let's see, we go. I spent one more week on this piece right here. So it did get its 10 days. I think there was a couple days on the weekend I did not work on it. So I'm not sure it was started two week, two, fr two Fridays or two Saturdays ago. I don't remember, but it didn't get 14 in the end. It, it is, mm, I totally blanked out for a second, mini Paris morning. It is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and the artwork is by Uliana Babanko. And that little doggy is my favorite. I am so not there. I am up top, mostly. I've started to come down on this side, um, but I'm in curtains, really, is what it, what it comes down to. So if I show you the full piece for a minute, so let me open it up. It's a decent size full coverage, but not huge. Well, no, because it's a mini. So, because I have some that are not called minis, but they, they're they kind of, they straddle that line between the, the real small and the real big. Um, so it is a mini, which will make it smaller. 243 by th wide by 325 high. It's big enough. So there's my fabric. And there's the piece. This is done on an 18 count white Ada, two strands over one, full cross. Now I talked about last week, oh, maybe I'll come down and finish off that, get go down to that corner. Mm -mm. Really, I had no interest in stitching purple, which is really kind of funny because I love purple. Nope, I was stuck in the pinks, pinks and the blues. So that's what I did. Uh, and I'm gonna fold it over this way too because I really didn't do anything on that side. I filled in a lot of blue, got some more of this color in, and there's a few stray other colors in there, but that, there was a big chunk open there. So I did that, and then I really, so this side, the curtain is much narrower than this side. So we have a lot more of the lighter pinks coming in, not just the darks. So I did it, I did some more here, and then I did a huge chunk there. And for the most part, I am trying, I have a little bit of confetti here and there, but I'm trying to fill it in as I go. And even the blue up here, until you get to where the, the, the greenery is, all of that is all filled in. So any stray other colors I did fill in. So this did get, um, I do, uh, and I've mentioned this several times before, but I always like to Reiterate it because I never know if you are new and you have not seen my videos before. I try to do my full coverage pieces, uh, these larger ones, for 10 days. However, that works out. 10 stitching days, so it might be longer. Sometimes I can get a lot of stitches in those 10 days. Sometimes I barely hit the 1,000, but I do try to I try to get 1,000. I suspect if I'm close, I would probably go an extra day or two because I really want to there's something about a thousand stitches in the piece that I know these have thousands and thousands, but each thousand takes me one step closer to getting it finished. So, um, that did get at least a thousand, probably a little bit more than that. And so now it's going away. Oh, and I meant to pull when I go to my plans, I'll look for it. I meant to pull, I know which one I'm going to do next. So we'll talk about that. Alrighty, so next, I have a lot of digital patterns this week, so you get to see the iPad quite a bit. I have to say, I like doing it this way. I marvel at everybody who they point and their little thing shows up, and but it doesn't stay. So if I think of something else I want to talk about, I can just pick this back up again and show it to you. So that's I kind of like doing it this way. Maybe it's not as technical and cool, but it, it's me. <laughs> so this is Philadelphia and it is a chart by Awesome Pattern Studio. That's what the final will look like. This is one that I'm telling you, you know, you look at it and it's not large. I think it's like a five by six uh, in the 18 count. So it's not huge, but man, there's a lot. <laughs> so here I am. I know I am still plugging away. One of these weeks I will come to you with a finish, not this week. And I am pretty darn sure not next week either. Uh, this is an 18 count Nantucket Sky by Fabrics by Stephanie. It is one of my all time favorite blues. I love it. I love, love, love how this will be, I think, framed because this is going to Megan. Although 
it's going to be a little tight here. I was hope if I had thought about it better, I would have put a little bit more over it because with, with Stephanie's fabrics, especially I liked it with this one, I should say, I like to show, like if I fold it over like that, I'd like to show the sky a little bit. You've got this beautiful fabric that looks like there's clouds in the sky in a beautiful blue sky. And I want to kind of play off of that. So I am at this point from here over completely done. This week what I did was I picked out sections, found what symbol, finished it on the side, and then tried to carry it over this way. And there are so many color changes at this point. I am, I, I completely overrested my ability to get this one done by June 1st. Just wasn't going to happen. I know you're looking at it saying, really, it's only this bit, but the number of color changes that will be in that bit, oh, and I have up here too, still to do, uh, is phenomenal. So I use this as my 25 seven piece, which means that I usually will stitch for, 25-ish. I should call it a 35-7 piece because I it usually gets about 30-35 minutes a day because I try to do at least three strands. Now, now that some of these colors are going to get less, it might still be three strands, <laughs> but just less to show for it. Um, so I try, you know, that's kind of like my, my guideline and, um, I don't know if I wanted to, I, I kind of like it as the 25 seven because there's so many color changes that I'm not sure if I was to sit down for, you know, two hours, if I would enjoy all the color changes. I like some, I wouldn't want complete, just one color, one, I shouldn't say one color stitching, one block stitching, cause this is more blocks. I don't mind monochromatics in the least. You can tell that because of the number of pieces I have that I do monochromatics with. But all of these small piece color changes, I can only do it in small doses, to be honest with you, um, especially now. I <laughs> Like this was a nice big chunk and there's a few others that were bigger chunks of, of color. So I've already exhausted all of those. And so now I'm really into the whole, you know, nitty gritty changing colors and it's going a little slow and it's just the way it is. So July 1st, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'll just do the best I can and just keep plugging away with it and we'll see what happens. Okay, next. Next, this is this is one that doesn't, it's full coverage, but it doesn't fall underneath my full coverage. I wanted to see the details on it. Um, my full coverage kind of umbrella. So I have, I think about 13 that are just full coverage, including this one, I think. But I'd say 11 of them out of the 13. So there's two that I have that are not in my area of full coverage pieces. Uh, this one, a Christmas deer. And these just get pulled when I feel like putting some work in them. So I don't get a thousand each time I see them. This one did get almost 500 stitches though. There's a lot of blocks in some areas. Then there's confetti. So I've kind of tried to mix it up a little bit. So this one... It's called Girl at the Beach. I call it um, Beach Girl in a Red Dress because she has several girls at the beach. This is charted by Simple Wave Studio, I believe is the... Yes, Simple, Simple Wave Studio, yes. And that will be linked down below. The artwork is by Jennifer Camp. And I do have three of these this girl in the red dress and then two more in white dresses and it is definitely much more subdued than a lot of the bright colors you've seen and I have another project that I'll show you that's more subdued and then I have another full coverage that I haven't worked on in a while I love color but then there's some times that I just love the soothing gentleness of neutrals and so I mix and match you will see everything from me from kind of the bolds and the brights to kind of subtles and neutrals just because it's that's I, I like the variety so that's what it'll eventually look like and I the only thing of the girl you'll see is I have started the hair I didn't work on that this week but it's it's a lot more background this is not ever going to be a ton of pops of color and it's just going to be eh, just trying to plug along each and every time so 
one of the big focuses I did here, so this is, you know, you have the blue sky down to kind of the grayish clouds, and this is the start of the horizon where then the water will start. And there'll be a little bit of water here, and then it's a lot of sand. There's more water this way, but there's never like a full in your face amount of ocean water because, you know, you've got the, the beach and like the, um, what are those beach grassy things, whatever those are called beach grassy things. Um, that's a big focus in this picture. So I did do that. I did have some fill-ins that I wanted to do, I believe up here. I still have some stray ones, but there were some chunks that I did finish. I did come over here and I did do some work on um, this. There's a huge swath here, a chunk that's just going to be sky. And in the picture, it looks, you know, more like white, uh, oops, there's a little bit of a thread, more white cloud, but I think in the end, it'll look nice with these colors. So this, like my other full coverage, is 18 count white Ada, two strands over one, full cross. And um, that's probably where that one's gonna sit for now. I do like it sometimes, um, especially if I wanna just do some chunk stitching with the, with the sky part. But uh, I just, I love the look of it. It just looks so peaceful. And you know me in the ocean. I love pretty much all things ocean. So, except swimming in the ocean. I'm not a big fan of swimming in the ocean. Um, but, uh, so you know that that was going to be something that I was going to focus on. Okay, next. Next we have, ah, this one's been so fun to stitch. This is Spring Quaker. Mm, I don't know what happened there. There we go. By Leela Studio. I have just the digital version of this. I started this. I bought this on a whim. <clears throat> I started it on a whim. I am starting summer in like a week and a half. Woo! And, um, but I just wanted, I just had to get this one, give this one a go. Mine is going to look pretty different than this significantly. I am using a different background fabric and I am, I did change up the Quaker colors. Some of the other accessory colors are all going to be as charted, but the main colors have changed pretty dramatically. So there we go. That's where I am. Let me fold this a little bit. Just let that flap. 18 count rose hips by under the sea fabric. I say this every time because I want to make sure if you go to look at her site and you can't find it, this was a fabric of the month this year. Her fabrics of the month generally in the year that they're done, um, I don't believe they're in her line that you can just go and have a custom uh, color. The end of the year, she generally does one open up to anybody who's not, you know, open up some of the colors up just for purchasing by anybody. You don't have to be in her Fabric of the Month Club. And two, sometimes she will ask about colors to make as part of her line. I know I remember seeing in her group a couple comments about how much people love this color. I adore it. I have got my fingers crossed, all of them, that she will make this a regular, um, a color in her regular line of fabrics. It is gorgeous. Now this is the 18 count, of course. I don't know what the other counts and types of fabric would look like, but I love it. Now, I, instead of doing the browns, I really wanted to highlight maybe spring a little bit more since this is a spring Quaker. And <clears throat> I don't know on the camera if it shows up as much. In person, you can see there's two different DMC colors. There's this one and this one. And this color will be the majority of the Quakers. There is one brown that's more dominant than the other. And this is the one that's the less dominant. So, and I went darker and lighter, just like she did with the, with the color choices in the description box below, I list all of my color changes. So I give you the DMCs that I've chosen instead for this. I did change out this heart and I'm not sure if it's going to be a like for like change as I get farther along, I'll look and see. And then I also changed up the words. With the brown Quakers, it made sense that the words were in black, uh, but because this, I felt like the black was a bit too stark, so I did go with a brown. All of those choices hit hit uh, um, description, but you know, it's, I don't know if it's more, more listed or whatever it is. If you hit that and you look down, 
and you go down until you get to Spring Quaker, all the information will be listed. I still love this one. I am working on this Quaker right here. And then I did the extra elements here and working on here. I am almost, so I want to say the start of the words through the B to about, I think I have maybe a little bit more to do. That would be page one. So I'm almost done with page one. I've gone down over to page two and then whatever this one is down here. But because it's the, there's the different elements, I, I just kind of mix and match and go wherever I want. I love it. Love, love, love it. Now, once Summer Quaker gets started, this one will probably get put to the side for a little bit. So I'm really trying to see how much I can get done before I start summer. Because this one really, it, it hasn't been that long since I've started it. The charts, Leela Studios charts are beautiful to read. They're big, they're easy to read, easy to see the symbols. These are 53 year old eyes. <laughs> with glasses. I need symbols that I can really see and it makes the stitching so much easier. Um, and uh, I just adore her charts and her stitches. So I am really enjoying it. I like this one as a zoom piece because I can do different Quakers or parts of it and still chat and not get distracted. So I'm thinking at least for another week, you'll see that. I then... We're coming up fast on the start of the summer Quaker, so we'll see what happens there. Okay, so in between all of the stitching, I did have a finish. Now this piece was actually gifted to me. It's a stitched piece from a quote from Mark Twain, um, and you'll see the picture itself, why this individual uh, thought of me and sent it to me. But here we go. And very, very simple. So we have the stitched piece, which has the um, interfacing on the back of it, cut down to a certain size. I wasn't originally gonna, wasn't originally matting it, but it did need that very thin mat of navy just to kind of separate it from the paper. This is a piece of cardstock, and it is one that shows sky down to um, beach sand. I can't remember what it's called. It's watercolor coast or something. And I really liked it and appreciated it because you have a bit of kind of the sand with the water and I just thought it mimicked it really well. And then it's just laid on a, on a background piece of cardstock, another navy. And all I did was because I wanted to make sure that, and it was um, initialed and dated, but even if it hadn't, I wanted to make sure and looking at it that somebody realized. And so all I did was a quick with, you know, again, there's lots of different like fine point acid free pens or whatever stitched piece gifted to me. Um, and then uh, what I did was there was a small note on the back or small note with the piece. And I'm just going to hold it back. I just cut that up and I put the note back there. So this way and along with the date 2023. Uh, that I am putting it together. And so I just, I thought that was really nice because this way, uh, if I wanted a bit more information and I just wanted the friend's note there. If you had um, another way you could do it, I just, I just taped this on there. You know, it was, it was um, easy enough to do. If you were doing these in say junk journal kind of way, what I would probably do is I would create something maybe like a pocket and then you could just, you could fold the paper, whatever size, and you could just slip it in the pocket. So somebody could just lift that out and see the note as well. So that, and that's an option I could do on the back if I chose to, but these, the back won't be seen unless you lift the piece out of the page protector. So I just thought it was a, a nice, lovely way to keep it attached with the piece that was gifted to me. So that's the full finish. So that will go in the scrapbook with my stitches Everything will get mixed and matched because it is a beautiful stitch that I want to be celebrated in the book. So, piece scrapbooked, and I'm going to put that over there so that doesn't get messed up. All right, we have a couple more pieces to show you for stitching. Two more, exactly. The next one, if I can find, there we go. <laughs> I have so many um, 
tabs open on my iPad. <laughs> I just, it's not, this one's not going to get done unless I stitch on it. So I pulled out Ireland. This is charted by Vlada X Stitch. They have both an Etsy and a standalone. I can't remember. I think I link both. This picture is coming from the standalone. And I have not decided. I, I'm getting close to, I'm going to have to make some decisions soon because I'm getting close. These colors, I'm, de I'm debating on changing out the greens and making it a bit more vibrant green. I understand the reasoning and the thought behind why they're that color. But in real life, especially against the fabric I've chosen, maybe on white fabric, it wouldn't be quite so obvious yellowish. Um, but as you can see, I've stitched this on a yellow. This is 18 count champagne by hand dyed by Rolanda. And putting those flosses up against this really turns them into that yellow green. And I'm not sure that's really what I wanted to highlight. So I'm still, <laughs> I'm kind of kicking the can down the road on that. I haven't made any decisions. I'm still working on the top. There's, you're not going to see it unless I really bring it close. There's a lot of um, cloud area that I'm stitching at the moment. So it's hard to see on this, but it's fine because it's going to be all covered with other colors. So I'm not worried about it. It will, it will show up just fine once it's fully stitched. Um, but I am rapidly kind of around here. Some of the greens start. So I'm going to have to make some decisions. The greens were chosen in a set of three, you know, light, medium, dark. I want to honor that idea so that it's just a like for like change. And so I'm going to pull out my DMC color card. I will use those, the original charted ones as kind of a guideline and see what I can do. I don't want to go 180 like in your face bright green because I'm not sure that's the direction I want to go. But I want to kind of do some sort of um, kind of middle ground with that especially given the fact that this is on yellow and I am not stitching the word Ireland. I am just going to have the country stitched and then this would be really nice to scrapbook with pictures. The last trip to Ireland, um, I, Shamrock was very, very ill. This was 2019, <laughs> right before everything got crazy um, and closed down. Mo and the kids ended up going. All four of us were supposed to go, but um, Shamrock got very ill. We had no, anybody who would have kept him was actually in Ireland themselves or away. Um, so, and he, there was nowhere we could send him because he was ill. And honestly, at the time, the vets weren't sure he was going to make it uh, kind of thing. So um, he's, he was, he's like, he was like a child to me, right? So I had to make the tough decision and I did not go on that vacation. And Shamrock and I did a lot of <laughs> doctor stuff instead. So, um, but then he rallied and he lasted another couple of years and lived pretty well for most of that time. But um so I do have pictures of Mo and the kids from their last trip, which would be nice to highlight. Obviously there are farther trips uh, longer ago that obviously I would be part of, but I don't necessarily have to be in everything. <laughs> I'm in enough things at times that maybe we highlight their trip in 2019 with this one. I'm not sure, but I could definitely see this easily a two page spread, you know, a two 12 by 12 page spread with pictures. I really like that size. Although you could certainly do the eight and a half by 11 size too, uh, spread with this, um, and pictures, because I think there were some cute ones of the kids. Um, so that's a thought, but before I get to that part, I can't be too moving too far ahead of myself because I will have to figure out the greens. So we'll see. I'll let you know when I know. And the very last piece I worked on this month, um, this got pulled out actually, I'm doing it for categories for Whip Warriors. It's the only piece I know for sure I'm doing for categories. And it was, the letter is K. I mean, really, the letters seem to get harder and harder each month that she pulls them. And she already took out like the really crazy difficult letters, but apparently every other difficult letter is gonna show up. Um, this one was for chart name and it's Kringles. I was flipping through. I said, Oh, I have Kringles. Now I could have 
for holidays done Kris Kringle, but you can't reuse a word. So I had to, I, this was really the only chart name. I'll have to see if anything else comes up otherwise. But this is what the original Kringles by Little House Needleworks looks like. Mine is going to look different because mine is a two-story building, not a three. I am taking a floor out. So let me show you where I am. There it is. 18 count Artemis from Be Stitch Me is the fabric I'm using. And I finished this room. I knew always that I wanted this room. I really loved that uh, clock. Now, <laughs> no, the clock does not have hands on it. <sighs> and I know it needs it in some levels, but I kind of like it the way it is. There's, it's used, I mix, I, it's charted for a mixture of one strand of floss, cotton floss, and one strand of, of Verisua, I think is what it's called. And I kind of went a different route. I grabbed some Petite Treasure Braid. And so I do one strand of, so the DMC floss that's charted for that is 422. And I'm doing PB02, Petite Treasure Braid, and it's 02 is the color that I chose. And I, if I show you up close, I really, really like it a lot. And in person, it sparkles and you've got that little shine without being nothing but shine in your face. Now, I did make a change. If you'll notice in the, I don't know how close you'll be able to see it in the trees on either side there, they had just, um, there were openings for lights or whatever, and it was just ecru. And I was like, and I was thinking to myself, eh, that's a little kind of just blah, right? You know, ecru on your, and, and I get it because this is a very, um, this is the other piece that, you know, is very different than my style, right? Um, but again, I love it. I love kind of that old fashioned feel of it. Um, I remember watching every year Miracle on 34th Street. And so it just reminds me of that kind of whole vibe. And I was originally going to put like, well, first I was like, oh, maybe just do some red lights. But the vibe here of like the birds and everything else is kind of that burnt, burnt sienna as opposed to red. So I didn't feel like that red would really go. And then I said, okay, how about, I do have like a kind of a sparkly white, but it's a white, white. And again, everything is ecru here. Like snow is in ecru. Everything is, is, is more subdued. So I ended up pulling, I happened to buy, and I had been at, I don't know, I think it was Sea Needles in Bethany at one point when I picked up that petite treasure braid. And I picked up just a few other kind of braids just to try them. And this one is Sparkle Braid. It's SK03. So it's a little bit different than the, the one I'm using for, not much, but you'll, you'll see there's a slight different variation in the colors. So I had this and I said, well, what if I just did one strand without any, without mixing it? I'm trying to keep my other petite treasure braid with the color that I'm doing. Um, so I, I ended up, I just pulled one strand. It is, it's kind of braided almost is what it feels like, which it's called sparkle braid. <laughs> Makes sense, right? And um, I used my loop method, one strand loop method uh, way of stitching. And I put the, I used that sparkle braid for the, um, the lights in these two trees. And okay, threading it was a challenge because it did split. But once it was threaded, it was beautiful to stitch with. I really liked it. So I think what I'm going to do, so if you'll notice down here, I did start, because once I finished that room, I said, okay, where am I going next? Well, I know I absolutely want the chandeliers in these two. I don't necessarily want what's here. I might transfer some of what's in those up here. And I know looking at this, this is, it's charted to be equal. So. Like on this side, you have the branches up top on either side to kind of match. And then, you know, you kind of have certain things like that matching. 
there's a reason why this is probably in the center kind of thing, but I don't care. I'm going to pick the rooms um, that I like the most, but I knew I wanted the chandelier and that is done in the mixture of petite treasure braid and floss again. I've got one half of it done. On the top of those, the lights plus the lights in like here, it's supposed to be the same color, but I think I'm going to do it in the sparkle braid instead and just have it slightly different. I don't know, maybe to the eye it will look all the same, but maybe if it's close on each other, it'll look slightly different. So I'll make the flames, the sparkle braid versus that mixture. I have never been able to completely figure out, like I would have, I've mentioned this before, I would have loved to have Santa in one of the rooms, probably upstairs, sitting in a chair, kind of profile, waiting for kids um, kind of thing. Maybe a Santa in the chair, maybe a tree, a little bit, part of a tree behind him with like a sign or something. But um, I keep looking, I keep checking everybody's charts to see if there's anything like that kind of Santa that I could transfer here. And I'm not talented enough to, to chart something that elaborate myself. So I'll keep one of the squares empty till the very last minute to see one of the top squares. So I will tackle some of the bottom squares, the chandeliers and figure out what might go in them. And then I have two more squares up top. So if there's a square that I absolutely love that I want, I'll make sure that is in one of the, um, one of the sections and we'll kind of go from there. So, so that's where Kringle stands. I'll probably try to give it some more time this month just because of um, the categories. All right, plans. So this weekend we have our virtual stitch weekend starting tonight, which I'm so excited about. This was originally started um, just to kind of provide a little bit of companionship for um, those of us who are home, this weekend is week weekend A of StitchCon and starting to see pictures. I'm so excited for everybody be that is going to be there and get a chance to just be in this whole stitchy environment and vibe. But there's a lot of us that just couldn't go for whatever reason. And, you know, they're wide and they're varied and, and there's, they're all good reasons why you can't be there. And um, so I just thought it would be a lot of fun if we could have something together that we could kind of... Um, hang out and talk stitching and so on. So this weekend we have a stitch a Zoom tonight. On Friday night there are three different sessions on Saturday and two on Sunday. I have them themed as what things I want to try to do in those times. The themes are optional. It's never too late. Um, if you wanted to, if you see this on Friday and you want the information on how to get into the different meetings and so on and so forth, uh, just reach out to me uh, on either Instagram or um, send me a, a message on Gmail. If you are in my Facebook group, Stitching by the Shore, uh, I do have it listed as an event and all the information with IDs is all listed in the event page there too. I'm still pretty new to Zoom, so I wasn't able to give like fancy links and all of that kind of stuff. I'm doing it really bare bones as I learn things myself. And, um, but that's okay, right? Every little bit we learn, we just become a little bit more proficient at something. So uh, I'd love to see you if you get a chance to. I understand if you are shy, uh, hesitant, unsure. I get it. I completely, completely get it. I have been there with you and I'm still, I'm still a really quiet person. So hopefully if you do come on the Zoom, you're not disappointed <laughs> because I am still pretty quiet. I'm not, I'm not like one of those can, that can work a room and is charming and this and that and all that kind of stuff. I am just me, quiet me. Um, but we'll just be there together. And even if we just hang out and stitch and you don't even have to say a word, but if you just like the companionship or whatever, we're going to give it a try and we'll see. So that's this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I know some of the projects that I'd like to work on. I know what I'm going to work on tonight and some of them the rest of the weekend, but then it's also going to be a surprise. So we'll see. I don't know how much of my full coverage or my 25-7 will get done this weekend just because neither of which would really be conducive to um, Zooming. I could see making a lot of mistakes. So we'll see. Maybe that takes a little bit of a break until Monday. Alrighty. So that is my plans uh, stitching wise and I'm super, super excited. Shopping. So you know I've talked about... Uh, 
how much I loved when I was strictly a paper crafter, my paper wheel, my, my color chart, my color wheel was one of my most favorite things. So for stitching, when it comes to colors, the DMC card, you know, with the DMCs is one of my all time favorite. I can't say enough how much this helps me for changing colors. Well, for paper crafting, what helped me immensely was a color wheel. And it was nothing simple, but I loved it, loved it, loved it. I couldn't find it, so I went on Amazon and looked and looked and looked, and I ended up with this set. They're not my favorites because they're way more elaborate than what I uh, wanted, but there'll be some interesting things on it. So with the color wheels, you know, you have your basic idea of, you know, you if you mix and match different colors, um, like with this one, for example, it shows you like variations of certain colors. So if I had a green and I added, or a blue green and I added white, what kind of color I'd get to it. The back here has different variations of colors. Um, and this is the main part of the color wheel that I find really helpful. What colors go together um, and you, you follow the arrows in the different areas. And they have, this has, is larger versions of those with different things uh, for you to see. And then you've also got kind of like the gradations of colors kind of thing. And they do have in the center, again, that whole look and idea of it. So then I was cleaning out, I was doing a little organization and darned if I didn't, I didn't find my original one. This thing is so solid. It, you know, it's several years old, right? It doesn't say exactly copyright, but it is solid, solid cardstock. These aren't bad, but they're, you know, they're flimsy enough. The smaller one's a little less because it's smaller. This thing, not going anywhere. This is an EK Success, which my paper crafters will recognize the brand. Um, and this thing has gotten me through so much. And so again, I wanted to, if I do this, for example, so again, they have all the variations of the colors here, but for example, if I wanted to use this green, right where this arrow is pointing, the matching colors that would also look good. There's this triangle. Then if I wanted, I could switch and then I would have a thinner triangle of different types of colors. I also have squares. And that would show me what goes. And I just love this thing. And then one side to the other, opposites. So there are colors that you wouldn't necessarily think that would match and go together. That was what I was looking for in these color wheels. And I can find it but it's a bit more elaborate and clunky. This is nice and simple. If you can find a nice, simple one, and I don't know if EK Success still makes these. You could Google it. It's small, it's compact, it's easy to read, and I would really recommend it if you wanted to mix and match colors. So I'll keep the other ones because there's some extra stuff on there, but I am so excited I found my tried and true um, one because, oh, love, love, love that one. All right. Next, I did get, um, I got some fabric from, to die for, just, I got a honeydew melon and I got twilight mist, which they're regular colors I use. And then this one I have shown you, but I got a large piece of it. It's called silver lining because I'm thinking of stitching the two, um, temperature charts, my birth year and Mo's birth year. And I wanted them on the same on the same fabric. So my two choices now, because I needed I needed a larger piece, the regular fat quarter wasn't big enough. I'm debating between Silver Lining from To Die For Fabrics and Angel Wing from Fabrics by Stephanie. This one obviously is a little lighter, this one's a little darker. The colors, if I just showed them to you in the Ziploc bag. Now for example, they're, they're going to show up really nicely. I haven't just decided this is a little darker, a little lighter. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use. Having said that, there's something I want to start in September that would probably use the other one. 
So it's not like one of these is not going to get used. Um, this is this is the non-color version. I just printed it off. That's the chart I'm gonna do. I love it because there's no extra stitching. It's just for the days. And so I will do Mo's birth year, my birth year. We were born in the same city, a year apart, and uh, they will be in the scrapbook. So I'm super excited. Now I have the fabric. I do have to go through and pull out all of the temperatures for those years. I am going to stitch them concurrently. So, um, you know, I'll do dates on one and then I'll do dates on the other. And this is all not fitting in properly. So uh, they'll get finished at the same exact time. I don't know if I did one, how much I'd want to go back and do the second one right away. So, or I, I just want them, I want them completed at the same time. I've done that before with some uh, projects where I've stitched the same thing on two different fabrics. This just happens to be the same thing, just two different years. So it'll be really interesting to see from one year to the next what the temperatures were in uh, those city, the city. Alrighty, so that is my shopping. Oh, before I forget, Erin Elizabeth. So I already have the nautical tier. Have I stitched the nautical tier? Not yet. I have not. But... I had to get, this is summer tier. I love the flamingo, just all the bright summerish loveliness. Love it, love it, love it. And then I had to, this one came out too, the England tier. Okay, the corgi, the corgi alone sold me. So, so cute. I remember I was probably in my early twenties and my mom, my uncle Tom, God rest him, uh, lived in London and uh, he was such a, such a big, bold guy, you know, um, full of personality, full of life, lived in London. And we found it was a four day trip from, I don't know, Boston, New York, wherever it was to London, a uh, four round trip, $200. Seriously. So my mom and I booked it and we flew out uh, flew over and we spent four days in London um, and we stayed with my uncle Tom and it was just I you know I don't remember every little detail I mean I was in my early 20s so this is 30 years ago but I just remember loving that trip I had such a good time and such great memories of London that I had to I had to buy this chart it is super super cute it's called English Tear if you're interested in it Erin Elizabeth, I bought them both as PDFs because I don't think they're out yet as um, printed charts. And I just, I couldn't wait. Her, I don't have it listed here, but her U.S. chart, not U.S. chart, her 4th of July, oh, here it is, is adorable. I thought about getting this one too, but it's not going anywhere, right? It's going to be there for a while. And I already have now three tiers that I need to stitch. But isn't that so much fun? Love it. So I did buy those two from Erin Elizabeth. Um, when am I going to start them? I don't know. The summer one would be fun to start maybe in July. We'll see. Um, but then I haven't bought this yet. But you know it's... Oh, goodness. You know it's coming. There's no way I can't not stitch it. There we go. Barbara Anna came out with a new Dreaming Girl. And it is called... Oh, every time I touch it, it, all right, let me just do images. There we go. It's called Blue Dreams. And look at that with the lighthouse and the colors and the, the boats and the, and I love it. I actually love it on that kind of color fabric. You know, I stitched her sailing dreams on kind of a, wasn't quite that much in your face. I might have a fabric on a whim, fiber on a whim, fiber on a whim. I might have, I don't know if it's persimmon or what it is. I might have a color that's similar to that. So I haven't bought that yet. If you love Barbara Anna and are thinking of maybe stitching something like this, let me know, we'll stitch it together. It will It will be something I get. I, I just haven't purchased it yet. It's like, I just spent money on the Erin Elizabeth which I haven't, not sure when I'm starting. I don't know when I'd start this exactly, but it is just, I saw it and I absolutely um, 
it went right away in my in kind of my mental wish list. I absolutely love 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 that, and I love it on that deep deep color. It would be cool in other colors as well, but there's something about that that brings out those blues. And since it's called Blue Dreams, that's probably where she's going with it. So that is a future purchase, but. I could be persuaded to buy it sooner rather than later and even maybe put it in a rotation if you were so inclined to stitch it as well. So let me know on that. So that's that. I didn't, and I don't know if I have the chance to. The other thing I would like to start, uh, you know what, I'll talk about that next week after I start my full coverage. I was going to show you this week, but I'll just show it to you next week once I've started it because we're already at an hour five. So you don't need me looking at more stuff. All right, so that is, that's my, my shopping. I did the fabric, the color wheel, and the digital patterns with Barbara Anna on the very close back burner. All right, giveaways. So this week we were doing You Are My Sunshine by Vintage Needle Arts. Isn't that cute? I was looking at this because I have this pattern too. And I was thinking, before I looked at it, looked at it, I was thinking in my head as I was getting uh, ready, the My Sunshine, the bright yellow, if the flowers weren't yellow, would be so fun with this one. So I'm wondering, I debated if I kept this but made the, made the flowers like white. Because you could see those as well. And this would just be like a complete sunshiny color fabric. I'm going to do a floss toss on... Because I think I think the My Sunshine was fabric of the month. So I've used part of it, but I have another part of it. You know, and something like a bright yellow, sometimes it's hard to figure out what to use, right? So depending, and I think white would show up really nice on that color. Um, that might be a lot of fun. So I might do something like that. But in the meantime, you could do it. It's just as beautiful this way. And if you see up top here, she does show it as a pillow too. It's probably the same there's just not as much shown out of the piece with the extra fabric but anyway so i asked you to say the word yellow for sunshine our sun the last finally our sun was yellow again today it was so weird At the beginning of the week i said to mo i said i opened up the shades and the sun was that way and i said to mo the sun is orange it's really weird it's like metallic -y orange and this was before you know i registered the fact that that all of that smoky air was coming down here and for the last few days it's so weird the sun has looked so so strange so i was really excited this morning i opened up the shade i said oh the sun is yellow still somewhat challenging out there but not anywhere near like it was all right, so I've mixed the names around enough. Who do we have here? We have Karen Ennis. Congratulations, Karen. If you could get back to me with your address, I would appreciate that. Now, I mentioned to you, I'm actually, let's see if I can, I don't know if I'll be able to put it in the container without messing it up. Oh, I can, as I'm talking. All right, so it's all in there for you now, Karen. I was, I mentioned that I was going through my fabrics. I had, I hadn't done, I wrapped my fabrics around comic book boards and I, I had just gotten lazy with it. And you know how much I like to get fabrics and I get the fabrics of the month. So there was a pile of fabrics. And when I'm kidding up projects, I'll pull out like a handful of all these different shades of different colors to try to decide what I want. And I just wasn't putting them back. <laughs> it was just a lazy time. And so I decided this week, I think it was Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, I don't remember when it was, that's it, you're doing it. And I put all of the fabrics away. And in doing so, I found this and I have enough, right? I have enough, this is a count that I think would be appreciated by many more of you than than um, would be my initial go-to. So I said, I'm going to share this. So this week is a fabric share, and that's what my giveaway is going to be. It is a 18 by 29 piece of Neptune, 14 count from Bastich Me. So 14 count 
is so soft. It's really soft. It's softer than the 18 count. That's what the Neptune looks like. Remember, as always, the camera is making that look starker than it is. It's it's modeled, but nowhere near like that in your face. It's not white. It's a lighter blue with the darker blue. And it is 14 count. I want to make sure you know that. So uh, I am giving this away. And it's, it's a good size piece. It's an 18 by 29. That's what it's called. Neptune. And I'm going to ask you to say the word Neptune. N-E-P-T-U-N-E. -E. Please say that somewhere in your comment. And I'll put your name into the blue bowl for the giveaway with that. So beautiful. And I just, why have it sit here? Why have um, 14 count sit here if I know one of you who really enjoys it would make use of it now? I have, I have Neptune and 18 count, so I don't need it. I don't need it to sit there when I know it could go to a good home. So that's going to be this week's giveaway. Alrighty, so that is it. That is the stitching. If you are here just for the stitching, boy, I always say this, you know, there's not much more talk after this. So you've made it through the hardest part, the longest part, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Uh, and if you're watching this late because you are at StitchCon, I hope you had a phenomenal, phenomenal time. And if you're going to Weekend B, you're getting yourself ready to rock and roll and uh, you'll be away during next week's video. So I hope you have a fantastic time. Alrighty. Uh, other than that, so let's go, what's going on? Obviously this weekend is going to be busy with virtual stitch weekend. Um, I think Mo, I told Mo already, I gave him, I gave him, the, I gave him the calendar of events, so to speak. I said, you're in charge of dinner Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I have to laugh because we have this ongoing joke. It's been going on for years now because when Mo's in charge or we don't know what to do, he always throws out, how about a bean stir fry? <laughs> and I mean, I'm like, no, no. And there's nothing wrong with a bean stir fry. We've had some really good ones, but I know exactly what he's thinking of. And it's one that we, at one point we cooked it to death kind of thing. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do that one anymore. I just can't, you know? And so our big joke is he's like, Ooh, so we could do three days of bean stir fry. I said, no. No, we cannot do three days of bean stir fry. So I don't know what's coming for dinner. Uh, I was thinking of, I have, I have a kind of an Asian slaw recipe that I might, I have the cabbage and the carrots that I just need to shred. So I might do that this morning beforehand. And I don't know, maybe some tofu or something. So we'll see. But I don't know what the weekend holds for dinner. We'll, you'll have to ask me. I'm not sure what I'll be eating this weekend. Um, I think he's got pickleball weather permitting tomorrow and he might go do the dogs uh volunteer with the dogs and i know connor's got work at least one of the two days this weekend i'm not sure more than that so um that's good because i've already told him i'm out of pocket don't even don't even ask well i mean there's times that i'll be available but uh my stitching with you all i am putting as high priority um what else is going on i am really really in the almost ready to go stages to Salty Yarns in Maryland. So that trip, I don't know exactly, could be next week, I'm not sure, but I think there is a day trip on the agenda. So maybe I'll have something to talk about next week with that. We will see. Um, this week has just been, I've been stuck inside. So Monday and Tuesday, I didn't really realize it. And I went out and I went for walks and I was said to Mo, I said, I'm awful choked up more so than normal. I didn't really think anything of it. Well, our temperature, we had, we were getting the smoke. Now, not as bad on Monday and Tuesday as say New York was, but it was in the, at least for sensitive groups. Now I'm not in that sensitive group, but I think maybe it kind of just messed up with my, my sinuses are always sensitive. So anything that could mess that up will mess it up because then on Wednesday we were in the red and then yesterday we even, red and or purple and yesterday we were firmly in the purple so yesterday was the worst day i i stayed home wednesday pretty much i didn't i never went out type of thing and then on thursday i did go to my needlework but i literally drove i got in the garage drove there had a i parked as close to the door as possible and went in 
and it was, you know, nice and air conditioned that w where we were. And then came out to the car afterwards, came home, and that was pretty much the extent of what I did outside. And the smoke was so, you oh, you, it was, I, I just can't conceive of the fact that fires in Canada, and I'm smelling the smoke here in Delaware. It was awful, awful, awful. Um, and it was really weird, that weird kind of sky. The sun was weird. We just crazy, crazy, crazy. So um, this morning it's still in the, I think we're still in the red, but the air doesn't smell like smoke anymore and the sun is not orange. So I think we're on the right trajectory and I am ready to get out of the house. I mean, I love my house and I'm comfortable in my house, but I'm looking at the, the sunshine and I just want to enjoy it type of thing. So before the hot, hot heat comes, right? So it's been kind of a weird week. Um, I really need to go grocery shopping, but we kind of just, I'm pretty good at making something out of nothing for dinner. And I was able to do that last night for dinner. Um, so uh, we'll just have to see what happens from there. But yeah, so I am thinking about though, all of my Canadian friends, especially, I am completely, completely I can't imagine what it's like up there if this is what we're getting here. So you are in my thoughts um, and I just hope, uh, I, and I know this is the start of the season. I mean, I know there's more to come potentially. So you are in my thoughts and I'm wishing for safety and um, not a, you know, not a continuation of this rough, rough time for the entire summer. Um, and yeah. That's what, I, that's that. Um, but uh, that's about it really. And then I don't have much more going on to be honest with you. We're just kind of plugging along. It's the middle of June already almost. And hmm, next weekend's Father's Day weekend, but I'll figure out more of that next weekend. I'll talk about that next Friday. <laughs> I don't know if we'll do much, but um, that's about it. So I hope you got lots of stitching in. I hope you are well. I hope you're safe. If that smoky air has gone your way, mask outside you know they that'll help keep that stuff out of your lungs the best we can do to keep our lungs nice and healthy right um so uh and yeah I, even just yesterday i was gonna go for a walk no wednesday i was gonna go for a walk and i um because it was beautiful morning and i was like oh i'm up early let's get going i saw the charts and i just lifted weights inside at home instead so we just adjust and we adapt and I was challenged myself and I was like, what are you thinking of, Laura? The walk would have been a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> so anyway, there are ways to adjust and adapt if we need to. And if you do have to be out, just please be careful. All right, that's about it. Uh, I hope you're well, I hope you're safe. You know that I am always rooting for you to take some time for yourself. Um, Self-care is not selfish. It is necessary uh, and you are important and you need to just take care of you. Please, 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 please. So we have lots of chances to talk stitching. So please take care of you. All right. Until next time. And maybe I'll see you this weekend. But until next time, happy stitching.